Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech and the next video in our series looking at solving IB and A level S1 statistics and probability exam questions using the Casio graphical calculator. Now I'm using the FX9860 here but don't worry if you've got a different model. Casio calculators have not really changed that much in terms of their basic functionality over the past 12 years. So whether you have a shiny new CG50 or a dusty old FX9750 or any of the models in between, you can still join in. In previous videos, we've covered standard deviation, Pearson's PMCC, and least squares regression lines. So enough of the stats already, time for a bit of probability. Today, we'll be taking a look at the binomial distribution and how we can use the Casio graphical calculator to generate both single and cumulative probability values. So, over to the exam question. This one is very straightforward. There is no context for us to interpret, and it tells us up front that it's a binomial distribution. Often the examiners are less kind, and you'll need to work out yourself that the binomial distribution needs to be applied. In these cases, you're looking for, scenari for scenarios involving a fixed number of trials and an equal chance of success for each trial. But nothing like that to worry about here. We just need to tap the parameters into the calculator and write down the results. Now, if you didn't have a calculator like this at your disposal, you would need to be using the somewhat archaic mathematical tables supplied in the formula booklet. But lucky for you, you don't have to. All the values in these tables can be calculated in an instant using your Casio device. So first up, let's put the calculator into stats mode by pressing 2 and clear out any existing data. I'm going to show you two different methods for generating the probabilities, depending on whether you want the whole distribution or just one particular value from it. The parameters for this distribution are number of trials n equals 8 and probability of success p equals 0 0.55. We're being asked to find quite a few different probabilities here, so I'm going to use this question to demonstrate how we can generate the entire distribution. It's arguably, arguably a bit overkill here, but a useful technique nonetheless. So first of all, I'm going to tap in all the possible values for our random variable x, which in this case is all the numbers between 0 through 8. We won't actually need all of these, but it's quicker to type them all in than to think about what ones we need and we don't need right now. OK, so now I've entered all these, I can get the calculator to generate the associated probabilities. To do this, press F5 for the distribution functions. You can see that the calculator can generate quite a few types of distributions here, but we need F5 for the binomial distribution. We're now presented with three further choices. Let's select F1 for the binomial probability distribution first. I need to configure this table using the distribution's parameters and tell the calculator where to output the values. First of all, it's asking where the values of X are coming from. I can choose either a list or one particular value of X. Now, I want to generate the entire distribution, so I'm going to pick the list. Next, I specify which list contains the input values, which is list 1. Next, I enter the numbers of trials n, which is 8, and the probability of success p, which is 0.55. Save results refers to where we want to post the output values. I'm going to tell the calculator to post these to list 2. So let's execute, and the calculator will now show all the probabilities. Now take care here because the numbers on the side start with 1 rather than 0, so they don't match up with the values of x. Better to look at the results in the data table, so press exit and exit to go back to this. Now we can see list 1 has our random values of x, and list 2 now has all the associated binomial probabilities. Before we start answering the questions though, I want to generate the cumulative binomial probabilities too, as some of the questions are asking for ranges of values. I can do this by again pressing F5 for the distribution and F5 for binomial distributions, and this time we'll choose F2 for cumulative probabilities. You'll notice that the setup table still contains all the data settings from the last time around, so I just need to change where the results need to be saved to. Now, if I just left it as list 2, it would overwrite our previous results. So I'm going to change this to list 3 and execute. Again, better to exit and exit to get back to our main table before we attempt to analyze these results. 
OK, so we now have the entire distribution with values of x from 0 through 8 in list 1, the associated binomial probabilities in list 2, and the cumulative binomial probabilities in list 3. Now, it was very quick to rattle all of these off, and we now have all the information we need to answer any question the examiner might throw at us. Right, question A asks for the probability that x is less than 7. Now, when students make mistakes with these questions, it's nearly always with picking the appropriate range. So if you struggle with this, I think it's helpful to visualise this range by listing the possible values and putting a ring around the ones we actually need. So, x being less than 7 means all the numbers from 0 through 6. So the probability of x less than 7 is equal to the probability of x less than or equal to 6. And that is given by our cumulative probability next to the 6 here, which is 0 0.9368 or 0 0.937 to 3 significant figures. Question B asks for the single probability when x is equal to 5, which is our value in list 2 next to the 5, or 0 0.2568, which we can round to 2 point, sorry, 0 0.257 to 3 significant figures. And C is a little bit more complicated. And again, it helps to visualize this by listing the possible values of x. So here, x is less than 6 and greater than or equal to 3. So x can be the numbers 3, 4, or 5. So we can either add these three single probabilities together, or we can use cumulative probabilities and subtract the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 from the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. I always go for the one that requires the least number of values to work it out. So I'm going to go with 0 0.7798, subtract 0 0.0884, which gives 0 0.691 to three significant figures. On to part two, which concerns itself with the new random variable y, which also happens to follow a binomial distribution, but with a different set of parameters. So we need to go back and enter the distribution from scratch. So f5 for the distribution function and f5 for binomial. We only require a single probability this time. So f1 for single binomial probabilities. And because there is only one value to find, there's no advantage of generating the whole table of results like we did in the first part of the question. So rather than inputting a range of values from the list, this time we'll input a single variable. The value of y I'm looking for is 2, so we enter it here. n is 10, and p is 5 twelfths. Now the maths tables won't have 5 twelfths, which means that without a graphical calculator, you'd have to do this one using combinations. So it'd be 10 choose 2, p to the power of 2, q to the power of 8. But here we can just tap in the parameters and let the calculator work it out, and we write it down. So 0 0.105 to three significant figures. Variance of a random variable following a binomial distribution is given by the formula variance equals NPEQ. The calculator won't do this for us strangely, so we'll have to type it in ourselves. So I quickly switch into the maths mode. The variance of y here is NPQ, so 10 times 5 twelfths times 7 twelfths, which is 175 over 72. So that's all for this video. You've learned how to use the distribution function on your Casio graphical calculator to generate single or cumulative binomial probability values, or the entire distribution with just the press of a few buttons. And no need to use those mathematical tables from the formula book. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful, and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. I'll be adding more videos to this series soon, so why not hit subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as they appear. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.